This is the final segment of the beginner fly tying series and the fly I've chosen for this segment is the rusty spinner and the final two techniques that we'll illustrate with this fly are one tying a spent wing which is a wing that is oriented horizontally as opposed to vertically and two tying a split tail. So let's get started and let's put our thread on the hook and start creating our thread base but in this instance for this fly once we get to the midpoint of the shank I want you to stop and trim off your tag end. Now what we're going to do is make a thread loop very similar to the thread loop that we made when we tied the beadhead pheasant tail nymph. There we used the thread loop to reinforce the peacock hurl thorax. Here we're going to use a thread loop to help us split our tail. So just to review, you're going to run out some thread, loop it around your finger, and reattach your thread to the hook. And you're going to secure both ends of your loop to the shank. Swing it up onto the top of the hook here. And secure those ends as you continue to make your thread base towards the bend of the hook. And once you get to this point, you can just let your thread loop hang slack for a minute. And let's apply our tail. Now we're going to uh, use a spade feather and prepare it in the same way that we did for the atoms. So again, these spade feathers are found on the sides of the cape, down towards the bottom. Uh, they have these nice long stiff barbs here and that's what you want to use as your tailing material. So we hold it by the tip and stroke the barbs out so that they orient at approximately a 90 degree angle to the quill. Come in here with your first finger and the thumb of your right hand. Secure the quill. Stroke these tips up with your left hand so that they more or less line up. I have to kind of reset and try that again here, which is okay. All right, so we've got, there, it looks like things line up pretty well there. Once you have them pretty well lined up, you pinch them with your left first finger and thumb. Let go with your right hand and come in with your scissors. And you're going to clip these barbs off of the quill. Gather up the butt ends with your right hand. And there we have our tailing bunch. We're going to tie this onto the hook. You want the length to be approximately the length of the hook and secure it right in with pinch wraps just like we normally do. And that looks pretty good there. Okay, a couple more securing wraps just to nail those butt ends into place and then they're a little long there so I'm going to just come in and trim them out of the way. And a few more wraps to secure everything down nice and tight. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your loop, okay, and I would twist it a little bit into a bit of a rope and you're going to bring it right up between, right up through the center of your tailing fibers. Pull forward and while maintaining tension on the loop with your right hand, you're going to take your thread with your left hand and tie the loop down into place. Okay, looks pretty good there. A couple more wraps just to make sure. Now a couple of these fibers here are sticking up, that happens, just come in and clip them off. And if I rotate my vise now, you can see that we've essentially made a split tail. We have a little group of fibers that are sticking out one side of the hook and a little group of fibers that are sticking out the other side of the hook. And that's how you create a split tail. We're now done with our loop so we can come in here and trim it off and advance your thread so that it's at a point about a quarter of the shank length of the hook behind the eye. Now let's apply our spent wing. Now the material we're going to use for this is called poly yarn. It's a you know, synthetic type of a yarn. It's got a, a buoyancy to it and a little bit of a translucency and some sparkle. Okay. We only need a very small bunch so I'm actually going to break this bunch in half and we'll just use half of it. And we're going to tie this on in the following fashion. I want you to hold the yarn at a 45 degree angle to the hook and you're going to make a loose wrap right across the middle of it and then another one. Give just a small tug to kind of keep it into place. You know, let go with your left hand 
you're going to pull back on the opposite wing with your right hand so that the near wing orients itself perpendicular to the hook. If I rotate the vise, you can see how we've done there. Okay. Now let's get things lined back up. And you're going to now cross behind the near wing and in front of the far wing with two wraps to, in essence, make an X wrap of thread on top of that wing. And that will orient it perpendicular to the hook and keep it in the horizontal plane for you. Now we're going to make one or two more wraps just to secure that in. Again, in front of the near wing and behind the far wing on the first wrap. Behind the near wing, in front of the far wing on the second wrap. We'll do it a couple more times. So you're just making X wraps of thread across the top of your wing. And that should secure that in there pretty well for you. Now we're going to cut the wing to length by stroking both sides of that wing up and just giving it a snip. You want your length to be roughly equal to the length of the shank of the hook. So you make your cut, smooth it down, and there you have your wing. Now to finish the fly, we're going to take a little bit of dry fly dubbing. Um, it's a rusty spinner, so we're going to use this rust-colored dubbing, and we're going to dub a body. Let's bring our thread back to a point about not quite to the where the tail material is, just a little bit before. And we're going to add our dubbing onto the thread like we've done in the past. Little thin wisps. There we go. I'm off camera a little bit, which I apologize for, but it's the same dubbing technique that we've used in the past. And now we're going to dub our body. You're going to back wrap the thread right to the point where the tail meets the body. And you're going to start wrapping your body, wrap your dubbing in touching turns. If your winging material kind of gets in your way, you can wait till the very end to cut your winging material. Sometimes that's a little bit easier. Um, you can just stroke it forward here a little bit though so it stays out of the way. I'm at a bit of a disadvantage because the camera is, again is very close to the fly so I'm going to nick the winging material a little bit. But at any rate, you're going to dub right up to where the wing meets the body. And then you're going to make an X wrap or two of dubbing across the top and bottom of that wing to create a little thorax for your fly. And just give it a little more bulk in the middle. So you do that once or twice. And again, I have just a shade too much dubbing, so I'm going to come here and just snip a little bit of it out of the way. Make one more wrap, pull my wings back. One or two more wraps, get that dubbing in the front of the wings as well. And then a few wraps to create a head. And come in with your whip finish. And make your final knot. Alright, we'll clip the thread out of the way and then I'll rotate the vise so you can see the orientation here. So again, you can see your split tail and the wings, you can just kind of pull them out into shape a little bit. You can fan them out a little bit. And there you have a rusty spinner.